Hello, my name is Volkata, and today we're going to look at another Mechabellum run. Now, I know it's been a little while since we published a Mechabellum video on this channel, and honestly, that's because I know that most of my viewer base aren't big Mechabellum people, but I still play the game in the background, and if we want to attract new people to the channel, we got to do other kinds of content. <laughs> Plus, I really enjoy this game, and sometimes we have these really great matches that I just want to share. One of which that we just had, and so I saved the replay, and I wanted to show that to you. Also, I want to apologize ahead of time. My voice might be off. I'm recovering from a rather severe cold or flu or COVID. We're not really sure what it is. And if there are any weird cuts, it's probably because I'm editing out all of the coughing to try to spare your ears. But let's get into this nail biter of a match. So starting right off, of course, we didn't have supply specialists available to us. So I take one of the next best things, which is the Marksman Specialist. It is really hard to argue with Orange Man, because a level 3 Marksman is really powerful early game. And especially when he's coming in with a fleet of Marksmen with him. Now the Marksman-Mustang combo is powerful kind of early game, but not really round 1. Because you lack any kind of actual tank. And without that 50 bonus of Supply Specialist, you can't unlock something like sledgehammers or steel balls to be your starting tank. So normally you're going to go with some kind of spam unit. In this case we're going to go with fangs so they can slow walk with the marksman and just act as a distraction unit. But we do expect to lose this round because of the lack of proper tanking. Now our opponent started off with steel balls and crawlers and wisely they picked up a couple of arc lights which is probably what I would have gotten as well. Of course, Orange Man here is tanking like a champ, because that's the closest thing we have to a tank. But he's going to stray over here alone, which is not really his best choice. Orange Man goes down, but he did buy us some time, and he dealt enough damage on his way out to actually carry the round for us. Now, I'm a big fan of the Shield Device Specialist. I've mentioned this before. It's a good generic take. It's free. And when you get into mid or late game, when there's a potential for off-screen bombardments, that extra shield health really can make a difference. So I will easily pick that up early game. We're going to grab a couple more Mustangs this round. The drawback of having taken the enhanced shields is that we didn't have that extra 50 supplies to unlock a tank unit and get two of them. So we went ahead and went with Mustangs to help with the, the clear because last time we did get overwhelmed by those crawlers and they got on our marksman a little too fast. Still, we would like to have something a little bit more tankish, but with having one round one, we do have the hit points to absorb a loss or two. Now that was a little bit more of a loss than we wanted, but still not critical. So here, I kind of expect the opponent to go Orbital Bombardment. If I were them, I probably would have picked up Heavy Armor for the Steel Balls. We grabbed the engine because, again, it was free. Air quotes, free, right? We were losing the 50 bucks they would get for, for skipping. But, you know, throwing them on Mustangs never hurts. Because Mustangs are, frankly, an overpowered unit. Again, I expect him to Orbital Bombard. But I need to get into something that is going to address that front line. And I only had 100 bucks left over for shielding, so I put it over Orange Man. Because if I was going to bombard, that's the guy I would have tried to kill. Again, we're more or less conceding this round. We're trying to set up our back line with the intent of switching to something tankish later on. Now, of course, the right side collapses quickly thanks to the orbital bombardment. The Stormcallers did all right over there, considering that they were debuffed. We'd like to have seen a little bit more out of them, but we don't have a front line still, so, you know. Seeing that our opponent went with Orbital Bombardment, I'm going to assume that he's going to go with Incendiary Bombs. It tells me that he's an off-screen player. He took Orbital Bombardment over a lot of very good attachments. So I'm going to try to meet him with that strategy. And we're going to pick up a Scorpion because he's starting to get levels on these Steel Balls. Scorpions are great for countering steel balls. They're also really good for killing things like Arc Knights. 
Unfortunately, we don't have enough money to buy a second one because we needed to shield up because I expect the incendiary bombs. And with what little money we have left over, we're going to pick up some fangs. Again, we don't have proper tanks, but having anything to slow down the front line so that our storm callers can get on target is going to be a benefit to us. Now, our opponent did do a good job of putting that just far enough forward to avoid the shield. That's a little bit unfortunate. Ours, however, went uncontested. And it ate up all of those Mustangs, which is a, really a big deal for us. The other benefit that we have here is that we're fighting from the back line. We're bringing the opponent into our area, so we don't have to have all of our ranged units go through that fire. And that's going to be a theme that we're going to work throughout this match, of bringing them onto our soil to bring them into our kill zone. Now we've gone ahead and grabbed the Acid Blast because the opponent didn't respond to the incendiary bombs. And I kind of want to make that a threat to him. We're going to put another shield forward to cover up for that little gap last time in case he tries to repeat with the Acid Bomb. Grab ourselves another Scorpion. That Scorpion last round did really good work. As you can see, he dealt a lot of damage for only being in one round. Our opponent is spending money on upgrades, which is not a bad idea. However, he has picked up what I feel is probably the most controversial upgrade in the game, which is missile interceptors on Mustangs. I've said this before, I'll say it again, I think that this is mostly a bad upgrade. There are scenarios where it works out, but the problem with the Missile Interceptor on the Mustang is that it dedicates their fire to taking out missiles. If it were a supplemental attack, then it would be excellent. So the Mustangs are now going to be busy trying to counter the Stormcallers and not dealing damage to our units. We land on the Acid Blast. Look, everybody's standing in there. Enjoy it. And, of course, the Scorpions are doing a great work. We also put Acid on them because, again, we're fighting kind of in our area. We're fighting close quarters combat. So there is more value in that upgrade rather than a ranged upgrade. He skips. He goes for some money. We're going to pick up the skill specialist because we have a couple of skills. Why not? I'm not confident that we're going to wipe them out in the next round. So I'm playing the long game. Finally going to spend some money on level ups. We're in a position that we're kind of happy with, so we don't necessarily need to spam a bunch of new units. What we need to do is prepare for how the opponent is going to respond to our current setup. And so while we wait on that, we're just going to level everybody up. I'm going to grab a couple more Mustangs. The reason I wanted to get these was because nobody is going air, and we are arguably vulnerable to it. I mean, we do have a couple of sets of Mustangs, but as a generic unit, you know, they can handle air in case the opponent does decide to pivot. And if they don't, then there's plenty of chaff in front for them to shoot at. Again, the chaff really is our only threat because we have scorpions to do the heavy lifting on taking out single target units and balls we need to make sure they can get on those targets yeah that was a quick loss our opponent is going into carry arc putting a lot of money into his arc lights leveling them up and getting upgrades on them carry arcs are very powerful and that's a dangerous upgrade that he just got. The elite marksman with all the levels he's getting on them is going to make a difference. And it's a real threat that we have to pay attention to. So what I've done here is I've picked up the EMPs for our storm callers. Now I'm aware that he is countering missiles, but again, we're setting up for long game. He wisely spams shields. We've Pestered him enough with these off-screen bombardments to get him to start responding to it. And we're going to add some more missile spam to deal with the Mustangs. 
And at this point, I'm aware that I need to pivot to air. But I don't yet want to. I don't feel like we're there yet. So we're going to drop down another scorpion. And we now have our EMP on the storm collars. And we just kind of want to spam the ground with effects. These crawlers are still kind of a problem. We're not taking them out quite quickly enough, which is allowing these arc lights to really do their work against us. And we're slowly losing control of the battlefield. We're gonna pick up laser sights, and the other thing I'm observing at this point is that his arc lights don't have the option for anti-air. So now it's time to pivot to air. Our opponent is trying to take out our back here and flank us, which is not a bad idea. I'm not a big fan of flanking. We'll do it sometimes. Most of the time it's just diverting your own forces and feeding XP to forces in the back. Him comboing the missile with bringing in new units is actually a pretty good combination. He's going to try to burn our back line. I'm expecting it. So we're going to shield up. And again, we've picked up overlords because we need to go air and grab cannons right away. Because keep in mind, the overlord primary weapon is missile base. It is vulnerable to anti-missile. But we're already going with missile spam and we're going to basically make these Mustangs useless. We also dropped acid in the back line because we knew where his shields would be. It's not going to do a whole lot this round, but since acid persists, it'll already be on the ground for next round. Our overlords have caught him off guard. Both of our towers are down, but he doesn't have the anti-air he needs to deal with them. There's just no damage there, so it's free reign for our overlords. But if you're doing the math, we only have two overlords left, and he has 900 health, which means we're not going to take him out this round. We did get another one of those shields down. That was a bonus. Round 9. Our opponent's at 100 health, we're at 516, so anyone can win this round. I went with Electromagnetic. I would like to have had the mod for my other Overlord, but I'm trying to end it this round. So I'm just going to drop it down to kind of annoy some of his units. I just want to weaken some things a little bit. Both of our Overlords gained enough experience points in one round to level up. His new arc light gained enough <laughs> to level up as well. Of course, he has the arc light experience bonus. So we're going to drop down a sentry missile here to clear this out a little bit more quickly. We're going to get mothership upgrade and pick up a wasp and throw shields on it simply to enhance the mothership upgrade because I want to spam air. His vulnerability is air. We've gone into very late game. And my strategy here is to strain his Mustangs into being completely useless. Because we've already tied up most of their firepower with the missile interceptor, so that now when he picks up the anti-air on them, they're going to have trouble switching between those two. So we're going to make relatively short work out of this back line here. Overlords are trying to clear out all of that chaff spam. Unfortunately, they don't clear it out fast enough to save the tower, which is going to give the Mustang some free reign. Even with two tower debuffs, our overlords are surviving a pretty good amount, but they don't survive the debuff long enough. And we talk about nail biters. We clearly have lost this round. We only have 516. Kill more, kill more, kill more, kill more. <laughs> oh, look at it go, look at it go. Yeah, 61. We survived for another round. I expect him to go with underground threat. I very strongly consider it underground threat, but Assault Scorpion is on the board. And if you're not familiar with it, Assault Scorpion increases the hit points of your Scorpions by 20%, increases their speed, and makes them fire more quickly. 
and all it does is reduce their range. Now, since we are fighting on our home turf, we're fine with that. It means they're going to shoot more often, they're going to survive longer, and they're going to clear more chaff to free up our overlords. And we're going to pick up some levels on our overlords while we can. Our opponent's trying to saturate at the other corner now. We're honestly not worried about it. I'm aware that he might do another flanking maneuver, but you know we have the overlords, so I know that they'll respond to it if he does. So we're bringing in a couple more overlords. And crucially, we have picked up the field maintenance upgrade. And we picked up a bonus hit points for everything, specifically for the field maintenance. All we need to do is outlast his Mustangs. It's so like this, this means nothing to us because he didn't put more anti-air on the table. We dropped down the incendiary bomb on our side of the map because we knew there would be shield spam. And again, we're fighting on our turf. Both of our towers go down quickly. Our overlords are healing, 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 healing. And all we have to do is survive the debuff, which we have done. These Mustangs don't have a chance. Excellent. <laughs> because we can out heal their damage. And again, they're not doing just straight damage because they're constantly diverting their fire to try to counter the missiles. This is why I say Missile Interceptor is a bad upgrade under most circumstances. But it was a really great round. We got a GG out of our opponent, which is always good. And I would have been okay with losing that one. And that's Mechabellum at its best. So I hope you enjoyed that match. And if you did, consider giving it a thumbs up on the way out. But thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in a future video. If you enjoyed this, you may want to check out one of these other videos. And thank you very much for your time.